What's up? Happy Monday. I know that's a weird thing to say, happy Monday, but welcome to Module 3, our study module. Third video, if you include Pastor Bodo's video on the three circles method, this is our fourth video in preparation for Mission NYC. You guys are on the journey. I can't wait to spend an entire week in New York City sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ alongside of each of you. And so today, there, there's a couple things I, I, I want to get out of the way before we get into our study, so so hang with me. Uh, I know I put it in the email, but I'm just going to share this, a, a couple things uh, with you. There there has been a schedule change. It's not that big of a deal. We're, we're going to serve no matter what. I understand that, but just so that you guys are prepared for it. Uh, Sunday isn't even really on that schedule because all we really had was, was going to church with Pastor Bodo and then doing some hangout time with him, but he, he told me uh, the last time we met that uh, he's got some some mission work for us to do on Sunday, so we'll we'll see what that is. He hasn't really expounded on that to me. Uh, the second thing is that Thursday he said we're going to go into Jackson Heights, do the stuff in the morning. We're going to eat lunch, but then we're going to kind of head into Manhattan. We're going to be in the Upper East Side. You can Google Map it. It's called Rock Church, and it's in the Upper East Side. It's to the east of Central Park. And we're going to be partnering with that church. They asked if we could come partner with them. They're doing a big thing this week. Uh, their church is doing some outreach. And we're going to help them hand out waters, granola bars. We're going to we're impact their community uh, a little bit. But then that night, Pastor Bodo is leading worship at their church. And then today, I learned that I am the preacher that night. So I get to preach that night. We get to go hang out with uh, a church in New York City and, and serve them. So we'll be at two churches this week. Again, same type of dress uh, as, as we talked about on mission. It, no shorts, uh, nothing that's sleeveless or tanks. You, you got to wear something like that. Uh, but just, just look decent, but you don't have to get super dressy dressy. Uh, also, this week, I want to highly encourage everybody that can. And if you, if you have to make some adjustments, it'd be worth it to come hang out at Floyd and Blackie's in Cramerton. Uh, from 6.30 to 7 in that time frame. Uh, we have a couple people that, that you probably haven't met that are going to be on our team. And, and really, our team hasn't come together to, to see each other as one at this point. You know many of the people that are on our team, but we haven't really seen each other like that. So anybody that can, we, I want to ask you to come and hang out that, that night from 6.30 to 7 just to introduce yourself, maybe ask questions. Um, if you have your final payment, uh, that you want to turn in, you can turn it in that night a, as well. Uh, we, we'd love for you to, to be there. But uh, if you can't, I know like uh, we, Sarah, I know that you're down in, in South Carolina, so that might be a little bit of a long journey since you're coming up here on Friday anyway to get ready to go. So uh, we just want to have that opportunity. Okay, let's jump into our study because I don't want to be here uh, for more than 10 minutes because the, the, the study material itself is really good. If you have your study guides, you can open up to uh, module three. Module three says my story, his story. Uh, let me just encourage you. It's real easy to jump off of this, the, the first page here um, of, of each of these and jump right into whatever activity it is that the module has for us to do. Uh, please don't do that. Like really spend time with everything in here so that you're you're well aware of it. Now, on YouTube, we can't have everybody come on here and tell their story, but I do want you to practice and prepare to do this. And, and here's why, because on our trip, as we go, please don't plan on, how shall I say this, vegging out the entire time that we're on our way to New York City. I want us on this journey to be sharing our stories with one another and giving a little bit of feedback, not being judgmental, but really kind of helping because we want to keep our stories down to that, that one, two minute mark. And, and if the conversation goes deeper, that's fine. But as we're encountering with people, we want to be prepared that if, if somebody asks us our experience with Christ, that we're able to do it in a short period of time. So I looked at this telling my story. And, and as I look at it, uh, the, the I went down through part A there. I, I had to identify the testimony themes of my life. For me, one of the, the early themes of my life was anger and temper. Uh, that, was, that was a huge part of me. And the, the second that I, I connected was actually uh, the pain of rejection. Uh, 
if you've been in student ministry for a while, you've heard my testimony of uh, that, that I have of loss, of, of having uh, a family that, that broke apart. It was really difficult. And, and looking back, I see that, that really the, the pain of the rejection really led for, to me, instead of um, doing the right thing, I, I, I got angry, got bitter. So as I look at that, I, I talk with people and, and really kind of put this down um, in what my life was like before Christ. So uh, if, you, if you write out your testimony, uh, which I think is a good thing. It says, uh, begin with my, begin with, there was a time in my life when, and it says blank, and blank, two main descriptors. descriptors. And so I, I would personally, this is the way I would start. I'd say, you know, there was a time in my life where my anger and my temper, uh, along with the pain of rejection of having a father tell me that he didn't want me, it dominated my life. And, and in that, I, I was lost and, and I felt alone and I needed something. Uh, not, not long after I turned 18 years old, I had a, a gentleman come to the church that I would go to and he shared what God was doing in his life and I recognized that God wasn't apparently doing anything in my life. And I, I wondered why mine looked so different than his and, and listening to his message of, of how God took him from really kind of the same position that I was, uh, of feeling lonely, feeling angry, feeling rejected, to the point of where he was on the mission field serving Christ and his life had completely changed, I realized that I needed Christ, that I needed what he had, and I didn't really know what that, that looked like. And so I asked him, and he asked me to read through a book of the Bible, and I read through the book of Job. And as I was reading through the book of Job, I, I really learned several things about God, but one of the most important things that I learned about God is that God knows my situation much better than I do. And I, I looked back over my life, all of the things that I was angry about, and I realized that God had protected me and provided for me through all of that. So I went to church the following day, I, I'd spent a week studying this, went to church the following day, and I met with this gentleman who was still at our church and, and asked him, how, how do I actually do this? How do I commit my life to Christ? I'd actually been around church for a long time, and we sat down, and he said, you know, one of the biggest things is then when your heart recognizes that you need Jesus as your Savior, that's huge because you're already at the point where God is speaking to you. And he said, what you need to do is then reach out and ask him for, for salvation. You need to ask him to be rescued. And so right there, I did it. I stopped and I said, I don't know if I'm really doing this correctly. I, I thought I'd prayed before, but this time uh, my prayer wasn't coming what I thought I knew. My prayer was coming from what I really truly believed. And I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. I asked Jesus to, to make me whole because I felt broken to to take my anger to take my bitterness uh, and and the, the truth of it is is uh, what, what I found was that in Jesus I found patience and I found love where I, I found um, the the fear of of rejection the pain of rejection I found God's unconditional love from that point on my life took a huge different trajectory and I've, I've become a youth pastor, something I never thought I would do is I am now, in, instead of wondering what God is like, I'm actually in the process of, of continuing to learn, but I get to teach people about God. It's, it's an amazing thing to see how God has taken me and allowed me to now become a dad who gets to uh, love my children in the way that I always wanted to, but I get to point them towards Jesus. I wonder, do you have a story like this? Tell me your story. And, and, and honestly, that's where I would go with my, my uh, testimony. Now, it's kind of weird to sit here and look at a television screen and a, a camera and, and do that uh, because there's nobody here and there's no response. But you can do that. You can uh, jump in and, and do your own testimony. Now, the, the second part of this, you'll see the three circles there 
uh, you can go back and review that as well. Review, listen to Pastor Bodo speak about that. Uh, we're, we're just trying to get this mentality that we're going to share the gospel. We're going to share the gospel. We're going to be ready. Whatever situation that we're in, whether it's in a park uh, with, with children or whether it's uh, standing on the street handing out water, that if somebody asks us why we are there, we're there to tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ and what it has done in our life and what it can do for them. But if we're not prepared for it, sometimes we're just going to hand that water and, and let it pass by. So get yourself prepared. Uh, for this week, um, we, we want to, to go ahead and read the religious beliefs and culture tips. It's incredibly important. And, um, and then we're going to be praying and in... The below there's the link to the prayer sheet and we're going to be praying for the Punjabi Sikhs of New York City we're going to see a Sikh temple uh, this week and, and you will meet Sikhs this week so we want to be praying for them that, that God would open up our hearts to love them and to encourage them and to share the gospel with them all right module four next time uh, we're going to put it out on Wednesday but we hope to see you at Floyd and Blackie's coffee house Wednesday night 6 30 to 7 I'll tell you, there's going to be middle schoolers there because our middle school ministry uh, is not meeting. It's July 3rd, and so they're not meeting. So they're going to come down there. They're going to be all eating, hanging out, and doing all that. But I want to see you guys there. Uh, let's pray, and then I'm going to. I'm just going to bounce. Thank you guys for hanging out with us for these uh, these 10 minutes. God, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you and to be together through the means of technology. Um, pray you'd be with Pastor Bodo as he prepares for our arrival. Pray for our hosts that are going to be hosting us at the New York School of Urban Ministry. Uh, pray for each team member as they think about their, their testimony and how they're going to share that as they practice that. Lord, I pray that you would refine us and make us uh, ready for what is to come. Oh, God, I, I'm excited for it, but I'll be honest, Lord, I'm nervous a little bit. I'm not, not sure who I'm going to meet, what I'm going to need to say, but I have the complete confidence that you will speak through me. Uh, Lord, we pray that you'd be with us as we prepare. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. We'll see you soon.